Hey everybody, welcome back. Mike from Spectre Comics here. Today I wanted to have a quick dialogue on character personality and character interaction when writing your comic characters, or any characters for that matter. Those two concepts actually go hand in hand, and I'll talk about some tips for writing characters with unique personalities, and then towards the end I'm going to get into how I write Spectre Comics characters, how they develop, how they interact. So make sure you stick around, probably midway through the video, We'll be getting into that, so stick around to the end to hear all of that great information. But quickly, uh, thanks for watching. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, follow my art on Instagram, and let's get into this. Now, as we discuss this topic, you're watching me work on Spectre Comics issue 6, page 25 on my Wacom Cintiq 13 HD tablet. I'm using Photoshop Elements 2019, and the great news is, as of the recording of this video, I have completed this page 25 I've moved on to page 26, and that means I just have six pages left to complete this issue before the end of the year, and I believe I stated that as a goal in one of my earlier videos. I actually have a week of vacation right now that I'm taking during this Thanksgiving week, so it'll help me get a jump on completing that goal. I'm already far into page uh, 26, and we're moving you know, as fast as we can to get, uh, get the book done before the end of the year. But enough of that. Let's get into character interactions and personality for comic creators. This is obviously in reference to you as the creator and as the writer. You, the writer, will be writing dialogue and interactions for multiple characters. How do you give each character their own personality that makes them unique and individualistic? I bring this question to light as someone who writes a series of stories with the same characters, and when we write, we tend to draw on ourselves as a reference. So you may, you know, if you're, if you're inexperienced, you may take a bunch of characters and each give them a single personality. And, you know, this character may be a happy version of yourself, and this character may be an angry version of yourself. And then, so you have these single emotion characters, that, and that's how they react. But they're really just an offshoot of you. And what that does is that creates just a, a flat group of characters that are really just, I mean, you can tell that one person wrote it and one person drew on themselves as the writer. So what you really want to do is create characters as fully developed with multiple range of, with a, a range of emotions, emotions, and uh, that each sound unique and each respond uniquely. Again, when we write, we do tend to draw on ourselves as a reference, and that means you get stuck making each character sound like you. Uh, very good writers can actually separate themselves out and create highly developed characters that behave in a unique way. Now for me, this developed over time. My characters, when I started writing, big group of Spectre characters, and they all just sounded flat and like me. And then over time, they kind of developed their own personalities. I had the luxury of time, though. I spent a lot of time with the characters, but maybe you don't have the luxury of that. So how do you write individual characters in, say, maybe you have a one-off story? The characters have to be fully fleshed out right from the get-go. I want to point out that the methods I'm going to talk about are what I do to create uh, unique characters. There's many ways to write character. There's many ways to write dialogue and scripts. I'm just giving you a couple of my methods, and maybe the simplistic way that I do it might help you kind of develop your own style for doing this. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is using other people that you know in your personal life as a basis of a character. Now, again, not lifting them exactly like it's exactly like Bob over here or exactly like Kelly. You want to take individual people and kind of use them as a reference for the people uh, that you're going to be writing. You know, you take a person in your personal life, you use them as the basis of a character, you analyze the things that they say, how they react in certain situations. Just like an artist, you know, a writer needs to observe the world around them and, and use that as a library of reference material in your head. That'll give you a clue on how you might uh, have a character react in certain situations. You can really grab somebody's personality and and not without being so overt about it, just kind of apply traits to the characters you're writing. Now, you can really this can really help you shape the interactions of the characters you're writing for. Now, if you have a bunch of characters you're writing for, you could select different people that you know, assign the different personalities to each character. And as a creative person, it's up to you to shape the personality of the characters you're writing to fit the story you're writing. Uh, you don't want to be so direct that you're literally lifting somebody's blueprint and overlaying it on your character. But it's nice to have that reference. Just like when you're drawing. When you, when you draw something, uh, you're not blatantly copying what you're seeing. You're using the image you're looking at as a reference to help your drawing be more realistic and accurate. So, you know, I, I never try to copy something I'm drawing, but I look at something, you know, using that reference image, it just helps you become more accurate in your drawing, as I, as I just said. Same thing with writing. When you're writing characters, take a real person's personality and see how they would respond to this situation or act in that situation or talk to this character. You know, I've, I've, you know, you see many TV shows where the characters talk really strangely, like, like no human would talk like that. 
you know, you want to try to make the voices sound real. You want to make your characters act real. And it just, it gets the character more into the story when your characters are very realistic. Now, uh, another way to give characters individual personalities is to get to know the characters before you even begin writing them. Uh, just like you design a character on a character sheet so you understand what their physical characteristics look like, uh, before just jumping in and drawing, you know, you design the character. You have a reference sheet. You can go back to that reference to make sure the character is consistent throughout your story when you're drawing, especially in comics. Now, you write, uh, for, the, for the personalities, though, you write a character profile. For prominent characters, I would even go a little further and write them a backstory. Uh, identify some major events that happened earlier in their life that may have shaped who they are and how they would respond in situations. This takes time, though. You know, it takes time to kind of come up with that backstory, but it'll pay dividends in the end as uh, you know what the character is about. You know what motivates them. It helps you plot your story. And we'll get into plotting out stories in a future video. That's kind of another topic. We'll keep that for talk and draw number, number five. So let's parse down these two methods that I just talked about for creating realistic and unique characters that don't sound like they're just a single emotion person that draws off the part of, you know, a part of the personality of the writer. Uh, the first thing you want to do is draw on people you know. Watch how people talk and interact. Draw on that observation and use that concept to create unique characters with dynamic personalities. And the second thing to do is to create character profiles, give your characters a backstory, and get to understand their motivations. In, in And in many ways, uh, both of these methods used together are very powerful in creating really complex and robust, robust characters. So now the moment you've all been waiting for, let's talk about the characters in Spectre Comics, how I developed them, and how it shaped their interactions and uh, with each other, and even characters outside of the main group that they interact with. So as an example, let's talk about Spark and Prox. Uh, Spark, at one time, early on, before I was even really writing comics, was just a single space explorer. He had his trusty robot sidekick, Proxy on 5000, or Prox for short. And I wanted them to have uh, humorous banter between them, but it made it kind of look like that they didn't like each other, but truly they're friends. However, Spark is has a leader role, and he is in charge, and, it, and that makes Prox subservient, and he doesn't think that should be the way. Now, here's the cover from Spectre Comics Issue 1, and right off the bat, you can see that their interactions are meant to add humor to the overall story. Spark is planting the Spectre flag like the intrepid space explorer that he is, and Prox is giving the bunny ears behind him and adding humor to this epic moment. Now, as an issue number one cover, establishing these, these characters right here gives the reader a little bit of insight to their future interactions. And Spark and Prox, they act as two of the primary characters. Now, I, I have a larger group of characters that I, I'm going to call my group of six the main characters of the Spectre story. But my first two characters were always Spark and Prox. So I, in my head, those are the two initial main characters. So it, it's very appropriate that they're on the cover of issue one here. And it's very appropriate as well that they're acting the way they are, you know, very stoic, epic moment and then kind of humor in the background. So they act as the two primary characters that uh, the reader will follow through the crazy adventure that they're going on. And again, we'll introduce other characters into the mix. And the dynamic of all the characters on the crew is, I, f I feel, what makes the story interesting um, and it allows the reader to, if you read the story, you will get to know that each character does have their own personality and the way they, they uh, respond to things. Now, Spark and Prox, even though they're a team, uh, they help each other out, they truly would look out for each other, but the way they interact makes the reader, the reader might think that they're always at each other's throats. The longer I've been writing Spectre comics, and it's been many years at this point, I'm trying to beat Jeff Smith's 12-year record for writing Bone, and I'm well on my way to doing that. Uh, the easier it's become to write the dialogue for them. No matter what situation I put them in, I know what they're going to say. I know how they'll act, and I know how they're going to act with each other. And I make that a prominent part of the story. It's right there. The reader can understand it. And again, that's mostly due to the fact that in my head, these characters have their own personalities, and they almost write themselves to a certain degree. Like, I don't really have to think too deeply on what they're going to say because I know the characters so well, I know what they're going to say. So they, they almost write their dialogue. And again, I'm, I'm always trying to impart humor into the story because it's kind of meant to be funny. It's got a serious kind of adventure kind of tone to it. But, you know, you add humor in, it makes it a little more interesting to read, and it's fun. Um, it's meant to be lighthearted and fun, so you want to get humor. Now, this, this method that I'm talking about is particularly helpful when writing humor. Humor is easier when you're drawing on the fact that the reader already understands who the characters are and can draw on the events that the reader has already read to carry a joke f forward. For instance, Spark is the leader of the group. 
you know, the whole group of six. He's the leader. And when somebody on the team tries to usurp his authority or he even perceives it in the slightest way by simply, let's say, somebody just makes a suggestion on what they should do next, he'll constantly re- remind them that he's in charge. And this joke carries throughout the series, and the characters have fun with it. It's just part of the fun banter between the characters. Now, that being said, you are the creator. You are the writer. All of this draws on your ability. These methods I talked about, that draws on your ability to write and develop the characters you're using in your story. Take the time to get to know the characters and let the reader in on who they are. Your characters are the main reason people keep reading. The best stories have good characters that people want to read about. As an example, Dan Brown writes great stories like Angels and Demons and The Da Vinci Code, but people read the stories to follow the character of Robert Langdon. They love Robert Langdon. They want to see what his next adventure is going to be. Write great character or group of characters that make people want to come back and follow them on future adventures. Anyway, that is all for this video. Thanks for watching. Again, like the video, subscribe to the channel. More videos coming soon. Check out my video on leveling up as a creative person, which is linked in the description below. It's also clickable at the end screen of this video. Follow me on Instagram where I post a lot of my comic art and some other pop culture drawings that I do sprinkled in there. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time and have a great day.